Hello and welcome to day 81 of the 1000 days of no code challenge. We all have received an email immediately after we sign up, like a welcome email, a confirmation link or so on. It's such a simple feature, but it's essential for creating a professional and engaging app. In today's video, let's explore the first step of how to integrate with a Gmail application so that we can all send emails from our Google account rather than using Bubble server. So let's get started. The first step in integrating with Gmail is to create a project on Google Cloud Console, just like how we did in the case of Google Login, right? So we will go to console.cloud.google.com and if you already have some projects and all added, then you will not see this. If you're logging in into this particular portal for the first time, then you will see this pop up and you can check this box and then click on continue. Click on agree and continue. Once you're done, click on create project. You can give a name to this. I'll give it as Gmail ABCD. Organization by default will be your domain. Location will also be shown as uh, your domain. Click on create and you will see that the project is getting created over here. And once it is created, you can select project. Once you select, go to APIs and services and click on enable APIs and services. Now click on enable APIs and services and search for Gmail. You have this Gmail API, click on this one and enable. Once the API is enabled, go to OAuth consent screen, click on get started. It'll ask you for the app name and you can give it as ABCD Gmail or any name that you want to give. User support email, okay, will be the email ID will be the same that you have used to log in into your console.cloud.google.com. Select that, click on next. And if you want the email to be sent from any user within your domain, then you can select internal. If you want each of your users, irrespective of whether they are internal users or external, then you can use external. Please note, if you are using external, then uh, once your development is done, you will have to make this as live, that is publish the app. And Google has a few steps to follow. You can follow whatever instructions is given when you publish the app. Okay, for now, we'll go with internal because we just want to be able to send the emails for all the users. I'll click on next and it'll ask you for the contact information and I'll give ABCD at web7.com. I'll click on next and I agree to Google API services user data policy and click on continue. Click on create. Once this is done, we we'll click on create OAuth client. It'll ask us what is the application type. Because we are working on Bubble, we'll select web application we can give the name it can be same or it can be anything different doesn't matter scroll down it will ask you for authorized redirect URIs we'll go to our bubble app and create a new page called gmail auth preview this get the link come back add the URL we'll add one more URL which will be without the debug mode equals to true and as always, we'll also add one from the live version that is remove the this you can do once your app is linked to a domain and you are going live. Okay, you will have to change all the URLs anyways. Okay, we'll click on save. So there you go. We've got the client ID and client secret. So I'll copy this and we'll go to our uh, app. We'll go to plugins. We'll search for Gmail by rate 7 and we'll subscribe to this one. Once this is installed, we go to Gmail auth page. I'll add a button here, okay, which will be and we can name this as get access. Click on add workflow, search for Gmail and you have get Gmail auth code via URL. Click on that. It'll ask you for client ID which we just copied. Redirect URL, which we pasted in the console.cloud.google.com. So I'll paste the same thing here. Uh, it could be with the debug mode equal to or without. I'll use the one without, right? And what this will do is it will give us a URL which we have to open. Now we have to search for open an excellent website and the destination will be result of step one. It will be redirecting to this particular page. Okay, let's first check what's happening on this particular page. 
So I'm clicking on get access. You can see that this will be redirecting us to Google page. I'm going to use this particular account. So I'll click on this one. It's basically telling the users that they are giving the permission to read, compose, send and permanently delete all your emails from Gmail, right? It looks scary. And that's why when you want to go live, Google has a few steps where they ensure that whatever you are doing is in the interest of the users, right? So I'll click on allow. And once I click on allow, it will be redirected to our uh, redirect URL along with something called code, right? So this is the code that we get, which Google is giving us, okay? Based on the user permission. Now, what we have to do is we have to click on this new, general, right? And page is loaded only when get data from page URL, okay? Search for code is not empty. Right, so we have to use this code and get the access token. We're going to do that in the backend workflow. I'm going to backend workflow and I'm going to create an API workflow, which will be get Gmail access. And for this, what we need is code, which is coming from the front end. And here we can search for access. You have Gmail get access token via code. Okay, this is coming from the Gmail plugin that we have. It's asking us for the client ID, which we've already got. So we will paste that. It's also asking us for client secret. And because we do not want to expose this one, it's a sensitive information and that's why we are using it from the backend workflow. So let's go back, get the client secret and we will paste it over here. Now the code is what we are getting as a parameter and redirect URI should be exactly the same that we have used in the front end while we generated this code. So I'll use this one without the debug mode equals to. Once this is done, we have to save it in the database. And for that, I'll go to data. I'll create something called Gmail access. Okay. So I'll create something called Gmail access, create a new field. And this one will be access token, which will be text. I'll create one more field, which is refresh token. This will also be text. Go back to backend workflow, select get Gmail access. Once this is done, create a new thing. And this time it will be Gmail access. Add all fields. Access token is result of step one's access token. Refresh token is result of step one's refresh token. So let's quickly check if this is working fine. And for that, we'll have to go to the workflow. And here we'll have to call backend workflow, which is schedule and API workflow. Select get Gmail access flow. Code is again coming from the URL. So use it this way. Schedule date is current date and time. Ignore privacy rules, right? So when we go here, refresh this, the code is already available here. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything. The code is already available here. So I'll just run this again. So I'll remove all of this and uh, have just the page, which is Gmail auth. I'll click on get access. It will take me through the same flow. I'll select allow. It will come back with the code. And now this code has been sent to the backend workflow. And we can see that we've got the access token and the refresh token. One last thing that we have to do on this particular flow is we want to navigate them to a different page. Maybe this time to one last thing to do. On the workflow, we can go and give an error alert. Access token and send emails from application. And also we have to remove the code from the URL. So navigate to page and we can just say the correct page. So let me delete the access code from here. We can test this one final time. I'll go here, click on get access. I'll use the same account. I'll click on allow. It will come back to the page with the code. It will be sent to the backend workflow. Access token is generated and that code will be removed from here. This is just a one-time activity. And if we go back, we can see that the access token and the refresh token has been generated. Now in the next video, we will see how do we use this access token 
to send emails and what is the and what is the role of a fresh token this is just the first step of gmail integration we are at to explore a few more steps in the next video we will actually put this to work thereby making sure that all the emails are going from our google account without any interruption till then i encourage all of you to set up your google cloud console project and i will see you in the next one